Shot one, take two, slate one, three, three. Action. In October 2019, Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy placed 25 cameras and 66 discreet microphones in the club's locker room, training grounds and offices. His intention? To record everyone and sell the footage to Amazon. Creepy or marketing genius? In this video we will investigate the rise of football documentaries such as Amazon's All or Nothing and Netflix's Sunderland Till I Die series. Why are clubs allowing cameras to go behind the scenes and film their players during some of the most intense moments of the season? What motivates them to be exposed in this way? Cut, we got it. Woo! First, let's analyze the traditional business model of football clubs. Club revenue can be divided into three main categories. There's matchday revenue, which is all of the money clubs earn through ticket sales and corporate hospitality. Broadcast income, also known as the income received for a club's involvement in competitions. And commercial income, including sponsorship, merchandising and commercial operations. This excludes any income related to player transfer fees, as this can fluctuate and is often offset by the purchasing of other players. So, how much do clubs make in each category? The top six largest clubs receive most of their money through commercial agreements. Barcelona make almost half of their income from sponsorship agreements, with only 35% coming from broadcasting and 18% as matchday income. But not every club has the worldwide fame and big-name players to attract large commercial agreements from the likes of Rakuten, Nike or Emirates. For these clubs, most income comes from broadcasting. West Ham, for example, rely on TV income for 68% of their overall revenue. Here lies the problem. Clubs have limited control over the amount of broadcast income they receive. Broadcast revenue is determined by an agreement negotiated between a league or a football association and television companies. The money is then divided, with more successful clubs receiving bigger payouts. Clubs are able to increase it through good performance, but there are huge risks to this strategy. What if a key player is injured before the Champions League final? That could cost them millions. Clubs benefit from this collective negotiation. Bundling the broadcasting rights of all clubs into a single package creates a strong negotiating position, leading to increasingly lucrative deals. On the other hand, having over 50% of your income dependent on negotiations between third parties is a risky business strategy. So how do clubs take back control? Matchday revenue is not easy to increase due to stadium capacity constraints, leaving commercial revenue the only viable area for fast income expansion. How does a club become more attractive to potential sponsors? Clubs have come to realize that there is one simple way to ensure they score a good sponsor. Becoming a media company. You may have noticed this shift yourself. Clubs have exploded onto social media with a wealth of new content aimed at different types of fans. There are training videos for the aspiring footballers, humorous Q&As with popular players and even inter-club rivalries between Twitter admins. Attention has become a major asset for top clubs. They are no longer satisfied with people watching on a Saturday and buying the shirt on a Sunday. Now they want you to consume their content every single day. The sentiment was perfectly summed up in Manchester City's annual statement when they explained Our media strategy was designed to capitalize on those on-field successes with content created and distributed to suit specific audiences in a targeted way. It doesn't matter where you hide, Manchester City will find you. There is logic in this recent push for media consumption. Look at Galatasaray and Milan who have high commercial revenue despite limited European involvement and low broadcasting income. The reason for this success? Both clubs had high engagement on their various media channels. But none of this explains why Tottenham or Manchester City would want to put up cameras to capture players and staff at their most vulnerable and often least successful moments. Surely football clubs build brands on success, not images of Danny Rose threatening to tell teacher because José was mean. 
There are three main reasons why clubs are willing to expose themselves. Firstly, the global reach of streaming platforms. Most of the documentaries have been distributed through either Netflix or Amazon. Both of these streaming services have something all clubs want – a big, juicy, global audience. Netflix has over 200 million active subscribers, with millions more watching through borrowed login information. Amazon Prime has 150 million users across the globe, and both are expanding into Asia. Netflix gained 1 million new subscribers in Asia over the last quarter of 2020 alone. Netflix has also agreed with Reliance Geo to offer subscriptions for around $5 a month in India. Football clubs are eager to tap into the lucrative Asian market, where consumption of football and its related products is on the rise. Leeds United's owner, who made his fortune in sports media, demanded the creation of an internationally distributed documentary to help introduce the club's brand to a new, younger audience. Leeds United deliberately chose for their Take Us Home series to be distributed on Amazon, citing its global distribution and deep links to the Asian market as prime motivations. As Angus Kinnear explained, it gave us the broadest range of exposure and meant that we could focus on producing the documentary rather than trying to strike individual broadcast deals in individual countries. Juventus, who recently announced a deal with Amazon's All or Nothing series, had their chief revenue officer praise the deal, stating, The collaboration with Amazon Prime Video is a perfect fit between two successful brands with a global reach. The emphasis on the global reach of the streaming giants shows exactly why clubs find these documentaries so attractive. They come with lots of eyeballs. The second reason for the rise of fly-on-the-wall documentaries centers around generating revenue. So, clubs have gained entry to a large, emotionally connected audience. What do they do now? Most focus on funneling these new fans towards their social media pages. Clubs usually have Twitter and Instagram accounts in multiple languages. These new followers are offered merchandise and updates through sponsored content advertising their partners. Tottenham went a step further and combined their recent All or Nothing series in a partnership with Amazon to create an exclusive club store. This offered Prime viewers an easy way to purchase Tottenham merchandise. Sunderland are the ultimate success story here. The Sunderland Till I Die series on Netflix was streamed to an alleged 60 million accounts globally. This saw a massive increase in the Google search results for Sunderland and grew their social media following to almost 1 million users, the most followers of any non-Premier League club. And they have been relegated twice. A former director at Sunderland AFC claims that the documentary boosted revenue in all channels. They made £900,000 from increased subscription to their in-house broadcasting service and total viewership accounted for one-eighth of all live coverage watched in League One. Sunderland also created an international fan club, letting them sell merchandise and discounted tickets to new fans. Not only does a documentary create a bigger audience for a club, it also offers them new opportunities to gain revenue from merchandise and ticket sales. Clubs also see a huge benefit when it comes to negotiating commercial agreements. KPMG suggested that a sense of increasing fame and high levels of social media following gives clubs a much stronger position when negotiating agreements with kit sponsors and commercial partners. Angus Kenya even makes potential partners watch the club's documentary, stating, When you're in a dialogue with someone based in the Far East or Latin America, Rather than presenting to them on PowerPoint over Zoom, you can say, take some time out and watch a couple of episodes and you'll really get a feel for who we are and what we stand for and the power of the club and the city. The documentaries are not just for the fans. Their emotive storylines and beautiful cinematography can serve as adverts for attracting investors. While the effectiveness of this approach is hard to measure, in 2020 Leeds completed a record £7 million a year deal with Asian betting company SBO Bet. Sunderland, fresh from a free fall down the English football pyramid, used the success of their Netflix documentary as a unique selling point when asking investors to purchase the naming rights of the famous Stadium of Light. Clubs are on the lookout for ways to expand their commercial revenue and diversify away from broadcast income. 
Documentaries have become a vehicle for entering global markets and creating new streams of income. We can be assured that clubs will continue to find new ways to keep us watching, especially with COVID forcing stadiums to stay empty. Do you enjoy watching football documentaries? And what is your favorite moment? Let us know in the comments. Some of the questions we get most in the comments are on how we do our animations, what editing software we use, or if we have any advice on how to start a YouTube channel. When we started this channel, one of the first things we did was a class on Skillshare by the amazing Polymeta on how to make animated YouTube videos from scratch. He explains the whole video creation process, from picking a topic, writing a script, to animations, and how to put it all together. It certainly helped us a lot, and that's why we are very happy that one year after we started Athletic Interest, this video is now sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Whether you want to learn motion design, video editing, or creative writing, you can do it on Skillshare. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity.